Mubu, hi everyone, Marches here. Welcome to the channel and for today's video, I'll be giving you my initial impression on the LeBron Next. Let's go. The sneakers that are in front of me are the baby brothers of the LeBron 20s, which I have here in the Time Machine colorway. And the LeBron 20s, if you've been watching this channel, you know that it's one of my favorite sneakers that came out last year, late last year specifically. And these are the baby brothers, the LeBron Next, spelled as NXXT. So this, I think, will be the soldier line, the, the one that replaces the soldier line of LeBron's, or this might be just a one-time thing because maybe Nike just wants to commemorate LeBron's 20th season. That's why they added uh, another silhouette for the 20th year of LeBron. But of course, let's talk about the details of the sneakers first. So the LeBron next, an XXT, which has this fuse upper, this like screen upper with an underlining fabric that is like a very thin neoprene material. So overall, the material is very, very fuse, but it's still relatively soft because it's very thin. If you look closely, you can see the pattern, which has really small threads that goes around the pattern of the upper. So even though it's really fused, it's still very soft. And while I was just trying it out here in my studio, they felt very comfortable. I think there's no need for break-in time on the upper of the next LeBron. While on the forefoot part, it has this, uh, no, this is just fake leather on the forefoot part of the sneaker. And look at this colorway, this is a mismatch colorway. I actually don't know the name of this colorway. It's Gen F. I don't know what that means, but let me know in the comments down below if you know what colorway this is, this mismatch colorway. And the mismatch is really, really nice. And as you can see, the alternate laces on this one. Now let's go back to the materials of the upper. We're getting side tangent with the sneaker, but the laces has a traditional lacing system, which I think is okay. Why fix something if there's no problem with it? So it has a traditional lacing system, very easy to adjust. And it goes around the, it's pretty much a mid cut sneaker. It's not really a high cut sneaker. So it's a mid cut because around the ankle collar you can feel that your ankle bone will be just about here so it's a mid-cut sneaker so if you just lace up properly the lockdown of the sneaker is really really nice the tongue is very well padded even though it's thin it's very comfortable plus they also use that Nike sphere technology which is the fabric that is really really soft so it's not the typical pillows that we can see on other Nike sneakers, but it has the same Nike Sphere material that they use on the LeBron 20s. And they also use it here in the next, which I think is more of like a memory foam type material of foam. So it's very comfortable when you're wearing the sneaker. There's no breaky type needed even on the ankle part of the sneaker. The material on the middle part is just a regular type synthetic suede or felt like material so nothing too fancy it doesn't shout luxury or what but it does its job even though the material of the lebron is very thin but still very fuse but what's nice about it is when you're doing lateral moves when i was doing my lateral tests on the lebron next it really contained my foot really well there's no stretch to the material of the upper so lateral support I think will be very good on the next and also in terms of durability since this is heavily fused I think durability will be a problem on the sneaker on the heel there's a, this uh, buckle that you can also see here on the LeBron 20s they use it here around the heel part of the sneaker and made it vertical which I think is a nice touch and as for the swoosh there's a mini swoosh here which will also alternate on the other pair to both have pink while 
the swoosh as you can see it's like a holographic style but not really so it's very shiny on both part which I think also is nice in terms of design on the swoosh of the necks as for the insole it has a regular insole and when I pull this out the cushion of the necks is very similar to the LeBron 20s but the main difference is I think the thickness around the heel zoom unit of the necks is not as big and as thick as the ones on the 20s but on the forefoot I think they have the same forefoot zoom turbo that they use on the 20s too and immediately when you're trying it out the first time I tried it out I could really feel the bounciness in the forefoot and heel very similar to the 20s but the main difference is the plushness of the foam carrier of the necks which I think is a lot more denser so I don't know if this is Cushlon or Phylon but kind of feels like Phylon but if it is Cushlon it's a lot more denser compared to the 20s because when I'm pressing them side by side you could really feel the Cushlon material on the 20s really being very plush so impact protection on the 20s is better compared to the next plus the foam is relatively thinner compared to the 20s so it has impact protection but not as good as the impact protection that you'll be getting out of the lebron 20s so the main difference is the plushness on the 20s if you want more plushness go with the 20s but on the next even though it has a minimal impact protection but still pretty good but what's nice about the next is so the foam is thinner so you're closer to the ground because the foam of the 20s is a little bit thicker so you're kind of a bit higher off the ground compared to the next so if you want the feeling of a closer to the ground feel cord feel the next will be good for you now let's move on to the traction of the next it has the pattern of Akron, Ohio. It's the map of Akron, Ohio. So that's a pretty dope design. So they have the map underneath the sneaker for traction. And in terms of the rubber compound, it's pretty hard too, even though it doesn't have the XCR tag and doesn't say, oh, it says EP, but it doesn't have the XCR tag on it. But the rubber compound feels really hard. But when I was trying out in my cement floor and it was kind of dusty, it was still squeaking and it was gripping really nicely very similar to the 20s so i bet if i break this in a little bit more it will become better but i'll let you guys know about that on my performance review on the lebron next as for outdoor use i think you can use this outdoors because the rubber material on the traction is pretty hard so i think you can use this for outdoor use plus the cushion that comes with it is it has bounciness and good impact protection on the LeBron next. One thing that I also am comparing is the width on the forefoot. So the next is a little bit slimmer, just a tiny bit compared to the 20s. So you can see the 20s traction outsole is protruding here a bit more. So it's a little bit wider around the forefoot, but on the heel, yeah, it's a little bit wider too on the 20s so take that as a grain of salt but the lebron next is still i think very stable because it's lower to the ground and it has a lateral outrigger here which has an angled outsole and foam so it kind of catches your foot a bit more so that you won't tip or sprain your ankle so it has a very nice lateral outrigger too Another difference between the two is of course the carbon fiber plate on the LeBron 20 switch. When you're bending it, you need a little bit more effort, but with this one, you could really bend it. But this one has, on the tech specs, it has a TPU plate. So it's nice too that they also added this on the LeBron X, very similar to the 20s too. It has a tech spec, so this one says it has a TPU plate, but I can't feel it because uh, although it's there, maybe it's a very thin plastic plate in the middle, but torsional 
test feels good, doesn't over twist too. So I think it's still very manageable, but I think that's the extra box that you're paying on the 20s is the carbon fiber plate if you want more spring back. That's what the LeBron 20s will give you. As for the sizing of the LeBron necks, this is what's kind of different on the LeBron 20s because on the upper materials on both sneakers, the LeBron 20 has a bit more space on top of your foot around the forefoot part of the sneaker while on the necks, it's a lot slimmer. So on the 20s, I was able to go half a size down. So I'm usually in 11. So on the 20s, I'm a 10.5, but I tried the 10.5 on the necks. It was really, really snug around the midfoot, forefoot part of this, my foot, just around this part. So I couldn't play with that. So I have to get a US 11 and the US 11 fits me nicely. So different size for the LeBron 20s and the uh, neck. So I think, so if you're a white footer, I would recommend more the LeBron 20s because it has a bit more toe space around the forefoot. But if you have a regular foot or a narrow foot, the LeBron necks fit will be a little bit better for you. As for the price of the LeBron necks, it is 8,900 pesos. So that's around $20 difference from the LeBron 20s. So the LeBron next is priced at $160 while the 20s is $200. So there's a $40 difference. But if you are someone who likes it really close to the ground, if you have a regular foot and you don't mind the materials to be not too premium, and of course it's a mid-cut sneaker, I think the LeBron X is a good option if you can't buy the LeBron 20s because the cushion has bounciness, good impact protection. The support of the upper is really nice. Plus, the traction also is very grippy. So for a US 11 on the LeBron X, let's weigh it in. It is 395 grams. So it's pretty light for a US 11 sneaker. So I really like the direction that Nike is going with the LeBron line. They're going away to the heavier LeBrons. So now this is, I think, one of the lightest sneakers out for 2023. So that's quite a surprise. So let me know what you think about the LeBron 20s. Hit me a comment down below. This has been Mark just once again. Thank you for dropping by this channel. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.